Hey coach, uh, I'm so happy you found us. Make sure you subscribe down below, hit the bell up above, leave some comments. We'll always respond to those. Um, also go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. If you're looking for resources, if you're looking for to become a better basketball coach, if you're looking for that one-stop shop, that roadmap, teachhoops.com down below is the answer for you. Have a great day. Hello, coaches. Uh, welcome to another episode of Coaching Youth Hoops podcast. Today, we have a special guest with us, Rick Torbett from Better Basketball. Uh, welcome, Rick. Thank you for stopping by today. And uh, we appreciate any time that you can take. And I kind of look at you as the basically the grandfather of all of this stuff, uh, not just I mean, coaching, but man, all the stuff online and the videos and the training, you've been doing that for over 20 years. So <laughs> yep. a long time. That was back when it was hard. When you had a video, <laughs> That was hard getting a video and everything up online and doing yeah. that whole thing. Now we just pull out our phones and 10 oh, seconds no. later, we're going to have a video up online. So unreal. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I watched it go from, you know, its infancy and uh, from VHS. Yep. VHS, we used to do that. VHS to DVDs to online and Man. to what we have going on now that's going so fast and changing so quickly. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with. It really is. And we got to be on all of those if we're going to try to be successful. Or a lot right. of them. Um, yep. Yeah, but a little bit about your background. So you're the uh, creator of the Read and React offense. Coached for a long time. Now, did you coach your girls? You have two girls. Did they play? Did you coach them? No, uh, no. I coached boys. Okay. For twenty years. Yeah. 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 Were they no. players? I'm sorry. Were your girls players? Did they play? Oh, uh, you know, in uh, the young leagues. Yeah. You know, uh, but by the time they got to high school, they got some other other interests Interest, sure. things and i i guess i didn't infect them uh <laughs> the way i the way i got infected you know yeah isn't that the truth i was actually yeah. i was thinking about that today i've been coaching now for about 12 years and i started in the youth league too coaching my son and i just I, and ever since then i mean i haven't stopped right so he's a sophomore in college right now and i wow. just been you know um all in from you know grade school i coach both my kids i actually still coaching my daughter she's a sophomore in high school now um, okay. so that's fun I, as i always say though i don't coach her my assistant coach coaches her <laughs> she'll listen a little bit better to him than she does me but you know a, a lot of people are are scared to do that but i just think it's a it's a really good exercise for you to go through in terms of you know, I'm your father, but I'm your coach. And yeah. we've got to, we got to work this out between us and how are we going to uh, relate to the rest of the team and how are we going to handle this? Yeah. There's potholes and bumps there, but man, that's good. It's, I think it's fun. Good. I'm blessed to be able to do that and see her through high school. And, and especially what's also fun is, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't get that inside view of her and her friend dynamics and all, you know, all her girlfriends and seeing from that side. Um, so that's really fun. And, you know, even her girlfriends now, I'll be in, a, in the weight room with my team, they'll stop in and say hi. And to me, that just warms my heart. That's just such a oh, special yeah. thing, right? And it's only going to be there for three more years. So I didn't enjoy it. That was the hardest thing and, and leaving coaching was the, uh, was the relationships. Yeah, he's always got this family, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. say my worst part of my job is the 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 day the seniors graduate or the last last practice or the banquet or whatever it is that last day you spend with them because right. it's it is it's hard. You spend so much time with these kids and you see them grow up. And like I said, I coach girls, so um, you know, seeing the young ladies grow up, it's it's amazing. Um, it's awesome, amazing experience. Uh, well, but anyway, let's I, dig into basketball a little bit here. You know, uh, one yeah. of the questions that I, you know, I, I was, you know, you have years of experience. You've seen, you know, you coaching youth to high school and you've seen college and you're touring all over uh, uh, with, the, you know, uh, sharing your read and react offense. And that's what we're running, by the way, uh, at our with our high school team. So uh, we actually, uh, actually, for the a uh, lot of the freshmen ran it for the first time on Saturday, I was yeah. blown away how 
well they just easy it was for them to learn you know a couple layers were in and um, they right. just got it. They scored. They kept their spacing. They read the read line. And I'm like, why Why didn't I do this? And we did a little bit of it last year. Um, it, it, but I, I'm just going all in on it because it, it, it's, there's some, the, anyway, we, we'll go into that a little bit later. But uh, <laughs> we could have a whole, as you know, a whole podcast. I, uh, I love hearing the story yeah. behind it. I love hearing it. But I would, you know, one thing I would like to know, and I, I just had at my coach's clinic as we, as I was talking about off air, and one of the things that came up was the stress point that coaches, youth coaches, are under, which is trying to get everything in in a short period of time. Most have one practice, one day a week. That's sixty minutes. A couple have two. So I'm just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on. What is, and you can break this up into groups or however you want, because, you know, a third grader is different than an eighth grader. But sure. given that, what should coaches focus on when they have that one practice uh, a week? Unless right. there's two, so, but it's, you know, either 60 minutes or 120 minutes, right, a right. week. Right. Well, uh, you've got, to, I think you have to sit down. Uh, with paper and pencil, and I think you've got to figure out what you're willing to live without, mm -hmm. because you cannot put yeah. everything that you know in in there, uh, or even everything that you want them or want them to know, or maybe even need to know. Um, I think that's that's when you're um, when you can narrow it down to what they need to know. You know, the absolute, mm -hmm. well, let's talk about that a second. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think, you know, confidence uh, versus anxiety, right, uh, for players. It's, yeah. it's the difference between fun and work, between winning and losing. And so what creates anxiety in players? not knowing what to do, where to go. Am I screwing up? Am I doing what coach wants to do? It, are my teammates looking at me like I'm a doofus or what? You know, mm -hmm. if you, if we can eliminate that anxiety, it will increase their confidence. And if it gives you as a coach, a chance to praise them and stroke them at every, every turn, you know, uh, because if you wait for something like scoring or a bunch of rebounds or a bunch yeah. of steals uh, before you stroke a player and encourage them and give them words of affirmation, um, yeah, they, they, you know, they can go a whole practice without hearing, uh, getting a positive stroke from you. So, so with that in mind, <clears throat> And you know the read and react, right? Right. Yep. Uh, there's no need, of course, to put the whole thing in. You can't. You don't. You don't have time. But also uh, at youth level, uh, you've got to sort of think backwards here, reverse engineer it. What can I expect from the defense? Now you know if we were talking about college, you can expect in the first game that there's going to be help side defense with. And if they switch, they know how to rotate and blah, blah, blah. Right. And how many different ways they're going to guard a ball screen. And are they playing in the gap or they're not, you know, right? Right. We got to take all that in consideration. That's why there's 10 layers in the ready react. Okay? <laughs> all right. But with you, you got to think, all right, what can I expect from the defense? And, and thinking that they only have an hour and a half or an hour, right. Away, right? So they, they're not going to be able to get everything in either. So. That's exactly right. So what yeah. do you think? I mean, well, what would give your – I'll tell you what I would do if I had a youth team. Yeah. De defensively, I would say, you know, uh, this is how you pressure the ball without fouling. Mm. Why? Because ball pressure is going to give, give you lots of stuff. Uh, because youth have trouble – dribbling and they yep. have trouble passing and catching right yeah and you got to be able to do all those before you shoot the ball well, everyone wants to talk about shooting well you got to do those first so defensively if i could give you a little trouble dribbling handling the ball passing and catching um uh i i, I put the odds into my favor okay now if that's the case and i know i know that that's what 
coaches of youth, uh, youth coaches are, are, are planning on because when you when you watch the games, what do they do? They full court press. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Things like that, right? Okay. So offensively, offensively, I I think you're crazy to try to put in set plays. You know? I agree. Because once pressure, pressure makes players revert to their most uh closely held habits. Okay. Yep. And if they don't have any good habits, they're going to freeze up. They're going to – and whatever they're trying to remember is going to be gone, okay? So, how can you eliminate their anxiety? How can you uh, reduce the chances of pressure? Um, and how can – and what can you do in such a short period of time to give those players – a first reaction habit to pressure, right? Mm, 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 well, mm. you know, and, and in the read and react, we, we put down spots just like you saw at the clinic, you know? Right. We put down actual physical spots on the floor. And uh, I'll tell you, when I, when I finally did that, uh, when we finally – I just went to a manufacturer and said, look, make these spots for me, okay? I'm tired of putting down tape and taking it up and yeah, – yeah, yeah. uh, just give me some big old, you know, eighteen inch diameter spots. I'll put stick them on the bottom and and um, so they won't slide. Immediately, uh, the ability to teach the read and react, uh, it just collapsed time frames. And here's why, Bill, because players want to know where to go, what to do. Right. Oh, there's my. Oh, that's the spot. Oh, if I get on this spot, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Yep. And coach says. Coach says, if I pass, I've got to cut to that spot under the basket. And then I've got to fill out to an empty spot. And I'm good, you know? <laughs> now, they may not, you know, but in their minds, that's what they're doing. Like, oh, I, I, I did it, you know? And it is a chance to really stroke a player, you know, that, you know, they come out of the game and you can say, you know, you, you, you fill those empty spots perfectly you were excellent you know your, your reaction all that kind of stuff it's a chance to put a little star on their helmet you know that's right um and the spots of course give us spacing mm -hmm. and the better the spacing the less chance of double teams the more space there is to dribble to handle the ball and i know a lot of folks want to um move the spots in closer to the goal, but I don't because youth, uh, they need a bigger window of recognition mm -hmm. than a, a higher level player who can see an opening developing and already be in the act of passing. Whereas youth, they got to see that player open and then have time to go, oh, and then cock it and throw it. And receive they're it. always late, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. The more the more space, the more space, the better. So, I'll kind of uh, turn it back over to you uh, uh, with this. Uh, my language with youth uh, becomes more about how to relieve pressure, how to get out of this. Okay. Yeah. Like, look, if you're under pressure, you can always pass to the right or pass to the left. You know. But, Coach, they're not open. Someone's over the read line. Well, we all know they're supposed to cut. But, yep. Coach, they're not cutting. Well, you can dribble at them, and it'll force them to cut, you know? Well, what if I'm being pressured dribble? Then turn your back, and let me show you a power dribble, and you can hand it off to someone, you know? Um, uh, you There's also, with them being on spots, there's space to drive. And they don't have, as you know, Bill, they don't have to make it to the rim. They don't have right. to pass. They don't have to score. They just got to drive. That'll push circle movement, and then they can bounce off to an open spot, and that relieves pressure. You know, I just don't want to see the player like this. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. oh uh, yeah. you know, you're in. We're panicked. We know we're in trouble. You know? Well, the, the thing that came out that the one takeaway that I, well, many takeaways from the clinic the other day too, but the one that really stuck with me was the ball's a decoy, right? 
And the if the ball is a decoy, that means everybody's looking at the ball. That um, and if you change the mentality, let me finish this thought though. If you change the mentality of your players that I have the ball, it's a decoy. My number one job isn't necessarily to score. It's to relieve some pressure potentially to have to give it away to, for somebody else to score. So if the ball is a decoy, that's going to leave somebody else open because somebody's going to be turning their head, looking at the ball, right? And you're going to have some additional cuts. So if you kind of change that idea of every time I get the ball, I'm I have to score. If not, I'm a, a less uh, a qualified basketball player, if you will, right? You know, or I didn't do my job. I have the ball in my hand and I got to score, right? Right. No, that's not what your job is, right? Just that's, no. <laughs> no, that's well put. That's excellent. I'll, I'm I'm going to use that in the Chicago clinic this weekend, okay? And I'll credit you three times, Bill, okay? <laughs> then, then after that, it's mine, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the coaching fair. rule? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Well, I, you know, actually this weekend, I, uh, I, uh, I, I was teaching – the K through or no, this was third through eighth graders. And I said, I'm going to teach the region react. There's 10 layers of the region react, but I'm going to show you how to do it in an hour. Because that's all you have, right? And I just yeah. I broke your read and react down to three spots. I call them the ABCs, the rules of the ABCs. And uh always be cutting and screening, always be cutting and sharing, always be cutting and um what was the third one I had? Cutting and screening, sharing. And I can't remember off the top of my head now anyway, but I broke it down into very simple terms. So a fourth grade coach could re relay those, those ac that acronym to their players and still right. achieve. And it's something that they can remember. The players can remember to do. Oh yeah. After I pass, I cut. Oh, that's what it was. After I pass, I got a cut, right? Remember your ABCs, right? right. Um, right. So, you know, it just kind of goes through anyway. So yes, so the borrowing uh, from your offense, and I just layered it to like, okay, how can I teach this in a clinic? But then, you know, I didn't have, I only had an hour um, in this one segment. And then, but then how can I help coaches teach it in less than an hour? So, right. right. Yeah. Sticky language. That was very good. Yeah. Create sticky language, you know, uh, yeah. that kids can remember. And the less the 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 better. Uh, I I was answering an email today, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it was a similar situation. And the coach was saying, you know, or, you know, how would you construct your practice plans with this? You know, it's a young team and all that. And I said, I have a tendency to just uh, cram, pass and cut, feed someone in the post and cut, and dribble at together mm. you know and i'm not talking about teaching all 24 scoring tactics that comes with all those i'm just right. talking about <laughs> can we put those three together and just kind of create your own possession because uh you know if someone is cutting and you throw the throw them the ball and they catch it and kind of stumble in the lane well you know they picked up the ball or something or they've driven in the lane and picked up the ball See, that's why I wanted layer two in there. Oh, what do we do? The ball's in the post. Yeah. Oh, we lake or cut, we feel. And every, you're right into an action that you're familiar with. And it's it's all designed to allow them to continue to flow from wherever the ball is without setting it up. That's yeah. right. And that's the thing I love about it, where you're not, like, you're not yelling, reset, reset, right? Or... And I always, I, the language that I picked up from you, which I thought was brilliant, and I, don't, I didn't say it enough, which was, you, you can't do anything wrong as long as you're in circle motion and you're moving, right? There's no mistakes. Because it, yeah. it goes back to what you said originally on the confidence side. It's like, they're afraid of making a mistake. So sure. if you keep on saying, there's no mistakes, here are the spots you're supposed to be, which I had down on the, on the on, right, on the court, just get to one. And Because what was the first question you think they had? Well, what happens if two of us cut? I'm like, okay, what are you supposed to do after you cut? Bill, right? Yeah. No, no problem. Maybe you'll get open. Just look at the ball, right? But just right. get out of the way if there's a driver, right? Just, you That's know, right. That's right. right? And so they're yeah. like, oh, okay, right? It took that, <laughs> it just relieved that pressure from them of making a mistake. Uh, yeah. I mean, if that can kind of be your theme, 
you can get a lot done in an hour. I mean, yeah. for you to say to them, look, if you ever get lost, just look for an open spot, go hop on it and catch the next train. Right. You know, <laughs> that's right. Act, yeah. like you, act yeah. like you planned it the whole time. Yeah. Same way with, uh, you say, oh, wait, I, I just cut and there, there's, I started to go out this side and there's no empty spots. Replacement screens. Mm. What's that? What's that, coach? You can replace any teammate you want. Well, how do you do that? Uh, yell, yell, yell their name, yell back screen, yep. and get in the air and land on two feet. And that's when they'll go. And then you can take their spot. And I, invariably, Bill, they'll say, to the youth will say, what's a back screen? And I say, I don't, don't worry about it. This is something, <laughs> for right now, it's something we say, it's just a way to replace them. We'll, we'll cover the back screen thing a whole, I don't, I don't really want them thinking about yeah. the back screen. I just, Ooh, if I have to take someone's place, I could. And all I got to do is yell their name, get their attention, get my feet in the air, land on two feet. And when we tell that that kid don't don't cut until you hear their feet hit the ground, and then you're you've cleaned things up. It's you know find your own solution. I'm I love uh, talking to young players about um, the fact that we're trying to build them into solution finders. Right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Amen to that. And, and, I was going to say to to that point too. I. <laughs> So we were running the read and react over the weekend with the uh, with the freshman, and this uh, young lady was cutting through the lane, and she kind of stopped. And I was under I was underneath the basket, and she stopped, and she was cutting really quickly, and then she kind of slowed down. She goes, "Can I set a back screen?" I'm like, <laughs> "Yes, of course, yeah, absolutely." <laughs> set up. Let me think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She set the back screen. The uh, so she set a back screen, got the girl wide open for a layup. And thankfully the wing saw her cut on that back screen wide open for a layup. And I'm like, Oh, this, I love it. I love See, it. That's when I go nuts. You know, yeah. I'm giving the kid who set the back screen assist. I'm giving the kid who passed it an assist. I'm giving, you know, kudos to the one that took the back screen and made the layup. I mean, even if they didn't make the layup, I'm probably exactly. I don't, yeah, some exactly. kind of statistical point, you know. Yeah, that's right. Because that's it does right. take three there. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and um, that's that's what is exciting. The, the you know we always said just play basketball, right? Just play, right? Just play. It's a game. It's fun, right? Just go out and play basketball. Right. And this, right. I think, this allowed them to just like it just you know i gave them some basic rules to start and they did it yeah. and then they like i didn't tell them anything about the back uh, the back screen and she just yeah. thought of that on her own and it was open and you know what i mean so they're just like that's how you play the yes. game right yeah well and then you're you're going to get a kid or tell me if you have uh you're going to get someone say it, it, is it okay if i drive <laughs> you know and and that's when i like to turn it back to them and say i say well yes it is but, but when would be a a much better time to drive i know you mm -hmm. could drive anytime you want to you just right. make up your mind and drive but right uh, let's talk about that now i that's a much more you know organic way of teaching them uh everything in the reading rack you wait for it, just like the 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 girl who said is it okay to back screen then it's a chance to say hey did y'all hear that hey come in here this is i've been waiting for this yeah Yes, you can, and here's what we do, and let's go through this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And good yeah, grief, yeah. you've got someone that scored on it. <laughs> yeah, all right. And, hey, yeah. we've got to replay this because I want everyone to do this. Dad Gum, this is so good. I'm going to make a drill out of it. And what's your name, Jill? Jill, you said the back. We're going to call this the Jill drill. You know, <laughs> I, any. That's a good point. That's good. And yeah. they think they've discovered yeah, yeah, yeah. it. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Make them feel. They remember. It. It. Yeah, so, yeah. so when when they say, "Well, like when's that. a good time to drive?" Then I'm gonna start talking about real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, big wide open areas where there's no. You know, don't drive towards the odd color jerseys. But I don't like saying that, Bill, because um, as funny as that sounds, the law of last thought mm, right. is right. working against me. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Odd color jerseys. Oh, that they'll drive. That's where it's supposed to go. <laughs> right. I want you to drive yeah. open spaces, open space, space. That's what I want in the last in her thought. Or someone who's running at you. Notice, Bill, I didn't say close out. It's mm -hmm. a basketball term. I yeah. might teach them. I might teach them that. But initially, first day of practice, that kind of, hey, someone's running at a defender's running at you or is the best time to drive. Now, which side do you think would be best to drive on? Now, that's that's going to be up to you. But yeah. And then you can eventually get to maybe in the second practice or in a game, you see someone accidentally draft drive a cutter. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. And then again, you can just kind of go nuts over it and say, gosh, that was so good. We got to put this in a drill. I mean, you know, it works. You saw it work. Let's get everybody to doing it, you know? Well, and the thing that I struggle with a little bit um uh, uh and when I'm, which i'm going to use your language here too there's you know you like you said you can drive anytime and i really want the want my team to grab the ball this is my high school team though grab the ball rip and go right just because they don't think that naturally so if i can get them part of the way there then at least they will they will do it some of the time right, right but yeah. what they were struggling with a little bit is well what about that cutter who's cutting through the lane? I'm like, they have to bolt through the lane. They got to get through the lane quickly to see if they get the ball back. So that relieves the pressure. I mean, that gives the opportunity for the cutter to cut. But what? I, but then we went to, they were like, well, they were kind of getting like, do I do it? Do I not? And you never want them to think, right? But what you said is we, were, we did talk about this real estate when girl would dribble at uh, someone, they would clear the lane. And I said, pause. We had the whole, you know, left or right wing section open. She had one girl to beat to the basket. That's it. Right. And I said, that is the ideal time to drive. You shouldn't even hesitate. There should just be, right. you should be gone. Right. Rip There's rip and go. So yeah. I, I'm going to you know, put that together a little bit better. And, and that's what doing it that way, you know, uh, leads these young players to, to start looking ahead. That's right. Yeah. Things. You know, mm -hmm. you can't always wait for the ball to be in your hands to, to make this decision, you know? Yeah. You're filling, you're filling an empty spot and this is open and, uh, you know, this side's open and your defender's closing out and here comes the pass. You yeah. Know? Instead of catch and go, how about go catch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we call it rip and go, but man, yeah. we, you know, you, you want to speed those those times up. Oh, um, so let's come back to this. So um, uh, real quick question for you. Uh, we'll do a rapid fire question. And then I want to uh, end with some time saving things you you would suggest Excellent. use coaches. Good. To, so. I was about to say something about those. Oh, good, good, good. So give me one. What was what would be one thing you would change about the youth game today? As you know it today, what would you maybe? Well, I'll just say change, change, add, get rid of whatever. You take that how you Absolutely. want. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Two things. Okay. No zone, no zone defense. Oh, amen. How can we make that happen? <laughs> uh, that's, there's no governing body. I that. know, right? That's just, the problem. Yeah. We don't have a one yeah. governing body that can control. And number two, uh, if you run a set play, it's a technical foul. Oh, wow. Oh, I never heard that one before. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, yeah. you, you, I, I stole both of those from the little country of Belgium. Oh, they can't uh, run. No. I was over there running camps. They took me to a game, a youth game. Yeah. And, um, uh, um, I'm watching, and, and of course, no one's playing zone, you know? Yeah. And I asked them about it, and they said, oh, no, no, no. Zone's real legal until age 13 or something like that. You said then, that was where? Uh, Belgium. Belgium. Yeah, because I had someone, I had a coach too. He, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, my um, service basketball practice play, basketball practice plans .com, he uh, wanted a custom plan and he said we can't do screens in his league there was no screening even so and the and no zone right couldn't do zone or screens or um traps right. at the youth level which totally right. makes they can barely get the and no full court exactly. press right exactly yeah no full court pressing yeah that, that you know no trapping that that's no trapping. the bad, bad yeah. thing uh i mean because then you just you got guppy ball everybody on both right. teams chasing the ball and yeah and, that's not basketball 
and their their comment to me was yeah. you if we run set plays before age 13 or somewhere like that it will ruin the development of our players that's that's what they tell me and oh uh there were no ball ball screens were not taught until age 13 yeah that's right yeah yeah amazing yeah, yeah. Uh, okay last question here then is uh, time saving, uh, three time saving habits that a coach can develop, um, or things to help them save time with a youth coach, in, you know, in a limited practice that they have every week. Right. Uh, okay. Three of them. Yeah. I got as many as you, you know, a couple, one, two, you know. give them some it. tips. What they, what can they walk away with? Okay. Um, uh, uh, okay. The first one is, my warm up, my player development, you know, getting shots, passes, one on one, whatever you want to do, dribbling, all that, uh, and learning the read and react offense. All three of those are done at one time. Mm -hmm. That's what my warm up is. My mm -hmm. warm up is. One, uh, you know, a handful of read and react drills, and I don't. Good grief, I've got. <laughs> you got a couple. <laughs> I got one package that's got 115 in them. You know? Yeah. Uh, and that's one of several packages of drills. So uh, uh, that all depends on how many goals you have, yeah. how many balls you have, how many players you have. Are you going to be three players? Is it going to three players, one ball? Is it going to be four players, one ball? Is it, are we going to have to feed it with the line because we've only got one goal? I don't know. But I want I, – I, you cannot do these linearly. Yes. Otherwise, you right. run out of time. Yeah. So, uh, example. Example. A simple pass and cut drill, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I pass to you. My, def my defender jumps the ball. I cut behind them. I rear cut. They hit me. I shoot a layup and then we, we keep this, we rotate among ourselves and mm -hmm. a real simple drill, right? Well, that's a rule. That's a habit and read and react. So we're learning our offense, how to react without thinking on this. We're getting our passing in. We're getting our uh, catching on the move in. And then every day I can change how I want this player to finish. Today, we're going off yeah. two feet. Tomorrow yeah. we're going to stop and give a pump fake and go up. You know, to progression. Yep. It's a one leg stretch or something like that. I, I don't know, I but that. yeah. And then I might put the defender on the passer. So mm. they have to fake a pass to make. And then I get to start talking about top shelf, lower shelf. But I do this over the course of the season. I get my player development. I get warmed up. I'm not going to waste time stretching. <laughs> I mean, you know. They got to do that before. Yeah, before, before they get practice, there. Yeah. You know? yeah. And shots, I mean, example, circle movement, right? I yep. drive, you move from here to here, I pitch to you, defender helps on me, right? Well, today's emphasis might be on the help by the defense, you know, their footwork, and then how to close out on and recover to your man. It might be on my one-on-one -on -one move, you know, my one dribble, and do I pick it up and push it with one end? Do I throw it two? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you teach there. But then yeah. the next day, it may be on shot preparation. It may be on how you finish your shot. That we've got to hold a high one-second follow through. I mean, this goes. I can take I can take that drill and have a different emphasis every day, but. They're learning the offense. We're getting warmed up, and we're getting our player development. So you got to collapse time frames like that. Yeah. By the way, there's um, I've got a course called the Kiss course. Keep hmm. it simple, right? Yep. I, I call it Keep It Simple System. Okay, <laughs> so it's, a, it's only a 45 minute course, and the tagline is coaching from a note card. Uh, so right. yeah. all the rules and everything yeah. you do is on a note card. Why? Because you got to keep things simple. You, That's you right. Have, time is precious. I even uh, give a on note. I have three note cards in the pack that are your practice plans. You know, three yeah. first three practices. So anyway, the next time saving thing I would do is you've got to teach both offense and defense at the same time cannot split those 
Yeah. So now this is as simple as what you, you and I were just talking about. So we got five players on the floor. They're learning how to pass, cut, fill out, fill up. They're learning how to dribble at and how to feed someone in the post and Laker cut. They're learning how to drive. Okay. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of that five on a little bit enough that they know, okay. Oh, this is where we go. And then I'm, I'm slapping defense out there mm -hmm. and uh, the fusion <laughs> practice project where that came from was my need to have defense out there and sort of playing live. So to, to help the offense and to handicap the defense, I made the defense hold a ball with two hands. So there's all five defenders have a ball. With oh, two that's hands. right. That's right. I saw a little bit about that. That's so right. That, yeah, okay. Yeah, now that's is. so that you can play defense live. Yeah. You know, you could block a pass with the ball and, but it, but now I can start talking about where you are supposed to be position wise on defense. Mm -hmm. But you know mm -hmm. something, as soon as you, yeah, as soon as you start playing a little bit of that, they can make the passes a, a little more successfully when the defense is holding the ball with, and I explained to the defense, yes, yeah. I am. I know this is hard to do, but you know, yeah. this is like weightlifting, you know, football players get in there and lift weights and tell me when, when do they do this on the football field? <laughs> they don't ever do that. On right, the football. Right, right, They're doing right. this in order to play football. But, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm trying. This is our kind of our weight training, you know. That's right. Uh, I'm making it difficult on you now, man. When you give up that ball and play defense, and you can use two hands, wow. That's how I'm selling it to them, you know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, did that last year with my team, and they were oh, like, uh, "I for totally forgot about them." Glad you refreshed my memory on that too. You got to go back to that because we, I had that, and they're like, "Defense holding the ball. When are we going to do that in a game?" Right. <laughs> and I'm like. Yeah. Not the point. You're missing the point, right? right? Use your feet to play defense, right? Use your body, right? Just don't use right. your hands. Don't get the foul, right? That's how it's you know, all about position. It's all That's about position. Hey, yeah. it's all defense is about position. Yeah. Having your body there. Now, uh, I love to then graduate to dribbling the ball while you're playing defense, because then I can sell it on. Hey, we need. We need more ball handling. We need better ball handling. You know, everybody needs to get better. Now we can do two things at once. We can play mm -hmm. defense yeah. and we can dribble, you know? Uh, so, uh, but again, it kind of handicaps the defense a little bit and allows our, our offense to have a little more success than they would have. And I'm just rotating teams. I'm just flipping teams back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Regardless of how you do that. Um, I am, I, you cannot do those separately. It's not for very long because you're going to run out of time. Yeah. Yeah. The last one is conditioning. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I am a huge proponent of giving up the suicide drill. Me too. And any other it's a waste of time. Like that. Yeah. And I, there's two reasons. Okay. Yeah. One, you're going to run out of time. Number two, I think running should be sold as something very fun and a privilege for you to do. Mm. And you get to sprint when there's transition, you get to run. Let's run. I don't want run running to be a punishment. Okay. Um, and so if you want conditioning, here's my suggestion. Put start out five on zero and just tell them that as soon as they score, they're going to take the ball out of bounds and they're going to transition to the other end. And I'm going to talk to them while they're, while they're, while they're running. I'm going to tell them what I want them to score with. Mm, right. Just over the passing cut. They're running down the floor. I'm going to score with a passing cut. And then they got to get in. They got to learn to shuffle the deck a little. And then as soon as they, they score, they're out of bounds and they're running down to the other end. I want you to score with a dribble at. And they got to shovel the deck. Uh, score with the dribble. I want you to get somebody in the post and score with the Laker cut. Mm -hmm. Now there's three trips. You can, I'm telling you, even with high scores, seven trips. Oh yeah. Gets to be tough. If you, if you're going as hard as you, you know. Right. Right. As forward. you should be. Right. Yeah. And, and I've asked players, look, what would you rather do? 
would you rather do this or do you want to line up and let's do some baloney sprint that you know and me yell at you and no they would rather chase a ball that's right put a ball in the well, court yeah they'd rather play. The me, first thing get, always, I'm, yeah. I'm collapsing time for, i'm getting transition i'm getting the offense and i'm getting uh yeah. uh conditioning in and by the way if you have something like 15 kids put five on one end on defense five on the other on defense and let this offense transition back and forth for their four five seven trips and then you switch and that way the teams aren't just standing and watching right. they're actually playing defense you can talk to your defense while uh while the ball's on the other end you can go in there and make make a few corrections how you you know you need to be between the gap of the ball, blah, 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 whatever. And uh uh and coach both. Get three things at like once. That. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and yeah, you no, know, that's amen. And we'll end on that note because I think that's so important. Um, what are you know, small sided games, right? Whatever you call those things, yeah. right? I think that's so important to get both two things done at one time, three things, four things, five things, right? Uh you got to condense that time. So, Rick, this has been amazing. I know we could probably turn this – we could go another three hours just chatting basketball. Easy. I mean, easy, yeah, easy. Uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, and uh, coaches, look at the Read and React offense. You just have to Google it. It'll turn up. Go to Better Basketball. Uh, Rick has been you know, at this for a little bit. He knows what he's talking about. All right, to next time, coaches. Rick, take care, bud. Uh, hey, Bill. Hey, uh, I, I – Thank you. It's a real honor to to be asked to be on your your podcast. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for what you're doing. No, I pre yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, no. All right. Let's, uh... Oops. Oops. Hey, Coach, so happy you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe and like. Go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better.